Everybody's going with Brother Tony. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is so good, amen. He's a good God and he's faithful all the time. I wish I had a message today that was just to just light you up, set you on fire, and get you running out of here ready to charge hell with a water pistol. Amen? But sometimes God puts messages in us that are timely and messages that we need to hear. Amen? And today this title to the message is exactly what it means, and we're going to go through some things here through our message, but I want you to grab a hold of this. The title to the message today is God Workers. You know... I heard somebody not too long ago say, yeah, that old four-letter word that everybody hates, work, amen? And today we're talking about it, and we're going to talk a little bit about it because it's important that we do, and it's timely what God is trying to do in his kingdom right now. You know, work and how we do work has, has changed. If you've not noticed that, you've not been around very much. I was reading an article the other day, and, and I was stunned to see how much of the population in the United States works from home now. You know what? I look at it this way. If you're working from home, you ain't working. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. You all know that. But how many know work has changed, and the way we do work has changed? There has been a shift in how we look at work. There's been a shift in the attitude and the mentality of work. Some folks still get up every day and go to their job, hit the grinding mill every day, do it every day, and, and, and come home at, at late at night and they work and, and it's part of what they do. Some do it differently now. They do it from their home and they, they've got it figured out how it works from home and how all that goes together. And, and I don't know if you've been out much lately. Have you been out very much lately to see how many workers we have out in our restaurants? Now, I'm not talking about warm bodies. I'm talking about workers in the restaurant, amen? The other day, we went somewhere, and there was like 100 tables open. And I looked around, and I thought, why is there a 30-minute wait? And, the, and I heard the waitress or the, 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 the hostess come up to somebody, and they asked the same question. And she says, we can't get workers. We just can't get people to work. Now, we can stand up here all day and we can talk about all the reasons why we think we can't get people to work today. We can get into politics. We can get into the government. We can get into the way things go today. But I think what we have to face in our world today is the way work is looked at and the way work is approached is differently now than it used to be. And guess what? That has filtered right into the church. That mentality and that attitude that's in our world today has shifted and came right into the church. And now we have to begin to look at how we view work. What is work and what is not work? What is duty and what is not duty? We got to begin to look at those things. And, God, and Jesus lays this out very plainly for us. And it's important that we understand that we need to look to Jesus to understand what it means to work in the kingdom. Amen. He's our example. I always say this. If you want to grow, look at what Jesus did. If you want to be like Jesus, you're going to grow. Amen. And I always say, if you want to look at what it means to work in the kingdom, you got to look at your example, and that example is Jesus Christ, amen? And we're going to go there in just a moment. God has put an urgency inside me, and not just inside me, but I've talked to a lot of pastors over the past two to three weeks, and I asked them this question. In Kairos, I asked this question yesterday to a pastor friend, a buddy of mine, uh, who, who pastors in New, New Pal. And I asked him this question. I said, do you feel an urgency to be working in the kingdom? And he looked at me and he said, 
brother, he says, it's in my heart. It's like God is burning inside of me with an iron that we have got to start getting busy in the kingdom work. We got lax. All right, here we go. We got lax when COVID came along. You know what? I'm tired of arguing about whether God gave us COVID or whether the devil did or what. I'm tired of arguing about all that. Guess what? God's in control of everything. It doesn't matter how it got here. It doesn't matter how it's going to go. We know God is in control. Amen. And COVID was used by the devil. And no doubt in my mind, it was used by the devil to break down the church, to break it down to the point to where people got away from the church. And now people are used to not coming to church. And thank God. God, we have social media. Some people were banging it and, and trying to destroy it, but thank God we have social media because that, I believe, is going to be the avenue to get them back into church and get them to understand how important it is to be with your brothers and sisters in Christ on a Sunday morning and feel the spirit we're feeling now, feel the love that we feel now. You cannot replace that. Although I love and respect the social media, it, it is not what we need. We need to get back to the church. We need to get back together. We need to get back into fellowship. You know, Luke 10, 2, and you can mark it in your Bible because we're not, we're not going to go there. But Jesus said to the, his disciples, he said, the harvest is truly great. Jesus saw the harvest. He said, man, it, it is huge. It is truly great. Then he said, but the laborers are few. The workers are few. Just like the restaurants and the places we go and we're seeing the effects of workers who are not showing up and workers who don't want to work. They're not coming uh, uh, to work. And, it's, and we see the effect of that. And Jesus saw it in the kingdom. He said, fellas, look, the, the, the harvest is ripe. It's white as it can be. If we're not careful, this is what we don't understand and we need to grab a hold of what Jesus was trying to say in this urgency that we feel as pastors and leaders, we're feeling this urgency to get busy in the kingdom of God because guess what Jesus was trying to say to them? You know what happens if you don't reap the harvest in time, it rots away. We miss our opportunity to glean and get everything that we can while the harvest is ripe so that we have food and we have everything that we need to last us. Jesus was trying to tell his disciples, the laborers are few, therefore pray. He said, guys, listen to me. This isn't going to be a physical thing. Let me tell you something. I, can't go, I can only go recruit you. I can only come to you and say, would you please do this? But it's going to take prayer and an act of the Holy Spirit to get back into the center of the hearts of people in churches today to get them ready to be busy in the kingdom work. Uh-oh. I could have went all day and not said that, huh? But the Holy Spirit is speaking and he's saying to us, it is getting close and I believe the coming of the Lord is coming. I believe it's close. I've heard it my entire life. I had somebody tell me the other day, I've heard that ever since I was a little boy and 60 some years later, I still hear it today. I don't know if I believe it or not. And I told them exactly what I'm telling you now. You better get ready because there ain't anything left in the scriptures. Nothing is left that has to be done for Jesus to come back and get his children. The rapture will take place soon and we need to be ready. We need to be ready. And I don't know about you, but I've got family, I've got friends, I've got people that I want to take with me. Amen? I don't want to miss the harvest around me that's out, right, right around me and it's wide and it's ready to be reaped and, 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 and taken in. And I don't want to miss that. And Jesus told his disciples, guys, you got to pray. This ain't going to happen physically. You have to pray that God will put it on the hearts of those to come and work in the kingdom, Amen. the kingdom work. Man, that's what we're talking about today. So I want to share some things with you to lead into something. It's time we come out of our survival mode and get into revival mode. 
I'm telling you, I'm so tired of people talking about just surviving. Oh, we survived COVID. Oh, we survived this government that we're dealing with. I survived uh, $4.50 a gallon. I survived this and I survived that. I'm surviving what's happening in our schools today. I'm surviving. I'm just getting through. I'm just trying to get through the day. I, I had the Holy Spirit speak to me the other day and said, quit preaching about that. Quit talking so much about what's wrong and start telling people you don't have to live in survival mode. You have the Holy Spirit of God working in you, living in you, walking with you. He's in this place today and he is ready for revival inside of our hearts. Amen. Give him a hand clap of praise. We win. We win. We've already won this battle. It's time to begin to look at what's going on around us and shut it down and say, God, you are bigger than this. And now it's time to get busy and do the work of God. Now it's time to shut that stuff off, shut it down, shut it aside, let it go. It's time, man, Satan has got us in that survival mode and God's saying, I want you in revival mode. I want you to begin to know who you are in me. And I want you to begin to know what your resources are. I want you to know that you have everything that you need to get through where you are in your life today. Doesn't matter what you're facing. It doesn't matter if it's physical. Doesn't matter if it's emotional, uh, financial, relational. It doesn't matter. God is bigger than the thing you're facing. You can get in revival mode in special ways. God has declared to all of us at the sanctuary. I'm not talking about another church. God has declared to all of us at the sanctuary that we must become his workers in the harvest. We must become his workers in the harvest. Guess what? I've always wondered this. God worked. You realize God worked, right? You, all you got to do is read Genesis. Seven days. On the seventh day, he rested. Now, why would he rest if he didn't work? Come on. So God worked. And guess what? Jesus worked. He got up in the morning, and, and as soon as his day started, man, his work started, and he worked until late in the evening till everybody else was gone to bed. Even his disciples would leave him and go to sleep, and Jesus still continued to work. So Jesus worked 24-7, and, and, and if God worked and Jesus worked, what makes us think we don't have to work? Oh, revelation. What makes us think that Sunday morning's just okay? All I got to do is come to church on Sunday morning and check the block off and I'm okay. When the scriptures tell us over and over again, there's only one thing that, that Jesus and the word of God talks about more than working and that is money. You didn't know that, did you? The scripture talks a lot about your money and your treasures and, and where it should be and where you should put it and all those. But it talks a whole lot more and a whole lot even about working in the kingdom. So who are we to think that we don't have to work? God did it. Jesus did it. It's a shame for us to sit and say, I don't have to do it. I've had people come to me and say, well, Jesus did it all. He paid the price for everything. I, I just need to live in my grace and, and accept the grace. And, oh, that's all great. That sounds wonderful. But guess what? If you keep that kind of attitude, your neighbor's going to go to hell. Your family member's going to go to hell. Somebody's not going to make it because you missed the mark because you don't have a work attitude. Uh-oh. This comes out okay. All right. It comes out okay. If y'all could see what I see sometimes, the Holy Spirit, sometimes the Holy Spirit actually giggles inside of me. Like, well, that was a good one. Now we got him thinking. Now we got him thinking. So when I think about some things, it's the becoming part. It's the becoming a worker that's hard. It's the becoming part that we struggle with. And if you read 2 Corinthians 5.17, that's where Paul says, Therefore, uh, I'm now a new creature in Christ. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And, and, and if we would realize that in our lives, we would know we're not the same person we used to be. Aren't you glad of that? Give God a hand clap of praise. 
Boy, I thought about this the other day. Lord, if I was the same person that I was 10 years ago, I, I would be in trouble in a whole lot of situations that I come up on. And I know some of you, can I say it? Your tongue got saved. Amen. It's a miracle. And sometimes that tongue goes back to the old person. Come on. We're all guilty. Sometimes that tongue goes back to the old person. Sometimes I act the way I used to act, and the Holy Spirit shakes me and says, you're not that person anymore. Amen? Thank God I'm not that person anymore. So now I have to look at myself and I have to say, man, becoming a worker in God is, is so important that I become that. I need to work on that. I need to say, man, what is it that I, I need to be doing, how I need to approach it? And, you know, becoming a worker takes change. you got, you got to change. Let me tell you something. If you're the same person that you were last year, I'm just going to say last year. If you're the same person you were last year, you're, you're moving backwards. You're not growing. You're not moving forward in God. The Bible teaches us that we, he intended us to go from glory to glory. Let me tell you what that means. That means every time something good happens and every time you reach a new level in him, that's not where you stop. He's expecting another level from you from glory to glory constantly growing and becoming everything that we need to be in Christ. So as I look at it, it takes a change. It takes a mindset. How many know you got to have a mindset to work? Somebody said, I had a little, little kid come up to me not too long ago, and he said, well, you're a pastor, so you don't work. <laughs> and he said, you don't go to a job, and you don't, you don't work. You just, and I said, I said, well, I said, without going into a lot of detail, I could see how you would think that. But here again, how many know on your job, it takes a mentality. It takes a mindset to go into your job, whether you work at home. Besides, that was a joke later. Don't get mad at me over the joke, all right? I know you work at home, and it's hard work, and you do all the stuff at home. But it is nice to be able to get up and go get something to drink and all that, you know, and, and maybe even have a TV on or something some of you might do. But anyways, I'm going to go on. I'm going to get past that. Work has changed how we do work. But as I look at this and I think to myself, man, it takes a mindset. I go back to the last five years of, I worked for 37 years as, as a, and Dave's sitting here. I know he's going to make some comments. Don't believe a word he says after it's over. But I remember going in at times and it took, if, if I didn't get my mind right, I might as well not go in. Amen. And times I didn't get my mind right and I went in and I was worthless, basically. Amen. It takes a mindset. So as we start looking at working in the kingdom of God, it takes a mindset, it takes a change, it takes a mindset, and it takes an attitude. How many know you're only going to go as far as your attitude? It's true. Your altitude is dictated by your attitude. However your attitude is, that's where you're going to go. I've seen, and, and this is a sports talk right here, but I have come up against guys that I know that, that I, could, I could beat them in any sport that they choose. But when you get into the game with them, their attitude is like, I'm going to beat you. And my attitude is, I already know I can beat you. So guess who plays harder? The person with the attitude that says, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to take you. I'm going to take you down. So don't tell me that attitude doesn't make a difference when you look at how you work. It's a big difference in how we get things done in the kingdom of God. It's our attitude. Now, let me go on because I'm going to share something with you here in just a moment. If we are to reap the harvest that God has prepared for us, we must be willing to work. You can't reap a harvest if you're not going to work it. If you're not going to get busy and work it, you can't, you can't reap it. You can't get it. How many know that convenience has taken the place of commitment today? 
Boy, I, I read an article the other day that said if you pastors have, an, have enough uh, uh, strength inside of yourself where you could go and you could shut the lights off and you could shut the ele- le- uh, electricity off, if you could cut the, the uh, air conditioning and if you could cut the heat and you could just say, hey, we're not doing that anymore, we're getting together and we're just going to praise God, how fast you would see your congregation dwindle. The fastest growing churches right now in America are those who are going with convenience. Even simulcast screens. The countdown. I love this because it it amazes me. I, I wonder what the Holy Spirit thinks about when the screen comes up and it says one minute to countdown. Now, some people are going to say, you're slamming, you're slamming churches. You're slamming. I'm not slamming churches, folks. I, every church has its reason and its meaning, and, it, and, and larger churches mean a lot to a lot of people. But I'm telling you, I'm starting to get a little worried when we put the Holy Spirit on a time frame. Uh-oh, 20 seconds left. We better get our seat because simulcast is getting ready to start. And I think to myself, man, we got to get a new attitude, man. We're getting to the place where convenience has taken over and commitment has just went away. If you don't think commitment has went away, just begin to look around you. Look at the people you hang with. Look at the things that the people you work with and begin to see in the marketplaces and all that. Commitment is just not there anymore because they want convenience. And convenience will not work in the attitude of a worker in the kingdom of God. Jesus did nothing, listen to me, he did nothing for convenience. Nothing. Never entered his mind, never entered his attitude, never entered anything uh, into what he did. Convenience was was not even an issue with Jesus. It was all about commitment. And today, we're going to talk about some things, and I want you to just uh, uh, go with me, if you will, today. And and you can read Luke chapter 10 later if you want, the whole chapter. It's awesome. Uh, uh, And we're going to talk about uh, uh, John 9, 4, when Jesus said, uh, we need to work while it's day because the night comes when nobody's going to work. Another warning from Jesus that we need to work while we can because the night is coming. When no man can work. So I want to go through a couple of things with you. Four things I want you to take home with you today. Things we must do in order to become, become a God worker in the kingdom of God. The first thing we have to do is our attitude toward God's work must change. Our attitude towards God's work has to change. A work attitude is needed. There's nothing worse than a bad attitude, amen? How many know a bad attitude can take you down so fast? We, Dan and I was able to go uh, away for a few days, and, and we had a waitress or a waiter with a bad attitude. You know, you can smell a bad attitude. You can see it a mile away. I could tell on his face when he came to the table He had a bad attitude. And guess what? He removed all doubt. (laughs) We had to beg for water. Didn't get the order what we wanted to get and things was running out. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know what? This is the world we live in today. It's just an, it's a world with a bad attitude towards work. And I look at this and I say to myself, man, our attitude towards God's work, it's got to change. We got to start, stop looking at working in, in the kingdom as work. See, some folks look at it as, man, that, that's just too much. I, I can't do that. And we got to start changing our attitude towards that. I don't know about you, but I, I always, I don't even go back. I go back all the way to when we first started working on this building. And I bring this up because we're in homecoming week. I bring it up because it's important to understand attitude. I remember, man, when we came into this nasty, smelly bar, 
Oh, yeah. It was a bar. Nasty. Oh, it smelled like you get drunk just sitting in here a long time. It was in the carpets. It was on the walls. And, and, and the door was right there where that window was at. And, man, you'd come in. We'd have to open up the doors and windows. And, and, and you get a buzz just working in here. And I remember there was four or five guys that committed themselves. No convenience. We're committed to this. We are going to get this done. And I'll never forget it. As long as I live, all of a sudden, our hours begin to get really long. And, and we, had, we had positioned ourselves to say, we're going to have an opening day this day, this certain day. We're going to have an opening day. And we've got this many weeks to get it done. And this has to be totally transformed in here and changed. And we're going to do it the way God showed us to do it. We committed to it. And all of a sudden, after a week of it, and I'm talking, I'm talking we held our jobs. And we would come here after our jobs. Our wives would bring us uh, something to eat. And we would work till midnight, go home get up at six in the morning, go do our jobs, come back. Women would serve us uh, a dinner and we would sit here. We'd be here till midnight. We did this for weeks upon weeks upon weeks. And guess what? After the first week, it wasn't work anymore. Man, we began to fellowship. We began to look forward to getting together, man. Yeah, we were tired. Yeah, we knew we had work to do. Yeah, we knew, but it didn't, it wasn't work anymore. Actually, it was fun. That's how crazy we are. It was fun. We began to, man, it began to be uh, just a time. And, and, and through that time of work, and man, we begin to grow together uh, in fellowship. And man, we become like one. Man, it was like we became so close and, and it wasn't work anymore. And I think we forget that when we look at the work that needs to be done in the kingdom. Yes, work that needs to be done in our church. Yes, the work that needs to be done in our community. Work that needs to be done in servant's heart. We can start going down the list. We can start doing these things. And we got to understand that once you begin to do that, when I go to servant's heart on Saturday morning, it is not work to me. It is ministry. Oh, yeah, we're working. But guess what? The attitude towards that has completely changed because it's working in the kingdom. To me, it's awesome. To me, when I get done at the end of the day, I feel like I could just charge hell with a water pistol because God has been so good and he's touched so many lives. It's kingdom work, but it's not work. The attitude will change once you begin to realize what you're doing and the work that God's calling you to do. The second thing I want to give you is be aware of the things that stop us, the things that stop us from doing work. How many know everything's going to come against you when it comes time to do the work in the kingdom? I tell every minister, every teacher, get ready, because if you've got a Wednesday night study, the devil's coming after you. If you're going to preach on Sunday, if you're going to teach on Sunday, guess what? The devil's going to come after you. Because of this very thing, we have to really start to look at what is stopping me from doing God's work. What are my distractions? And then I have to look at Jesus again. How many know Jesus did not allow anything to get in his way? Jesus did not get attached to anything. He did not allow anything to come in and distract him from the work that his father sent him to do. Nothing got in the way of working in the kingdom. His disciples were different. His disciples were always making excuses. You remember when uh, uh, the, the, the folks were hungry and, and, and Jesus told them, said, we need to feed these guys. And guess what the disciples did? Oh, no, that's too much work. We, we need to send them away. Get them out of here, you know, so we can have our day. Immediately, the disciples went against the work. No, that's too much work. Jesus sent them away. And Jesus said, no, you feed them. 
And he taught them a lesson that day. You cannot get away from working in the kingdom. You need to be working in the kingdom. And we all know how that story come out. There were several, there were several, man, I, I can't even count the times that the disciples tried to get away from working. And Jesus reminded them, no, you need to do this. It's something you need to do. So we all need to begin to look at our lives and say, man, what is keeping me? What's keeping me from working in the kingdom? What's stopping me from taking advantage of the opportunity to minister? You say, well, pastor, I don't have a lot of opportunities to minister. I think you have more than you might think. The devil likes to disguise that by keeping you busy. But there's a whole lot of things in the kingdom that we could be doing. And the devil wants you to focus on the things that are in your life that are interrupting and that are distractions to keep you from working in the kingdom. The third thing, we must be willing to act. How many know the old saying, actions are louder than? Say it again. Actions are louder than? I don't care what anybody says. The world is tired of people talking. I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of seeing politicians on TV standing up there lying right through their teeth. You know they're lying. You know they're lying. And they're smiling at the same time. Big old white teeth shining. Telling lie after lie after lie. I'm so tired. I'm tired of hearing people talk. I'm tired. Can you imagine how tired we are of hearing people talk? Can you imagine how much God is tired of hearing his people talk? He's ready for action. Amen. The world is looking up to us and saying, what do you have for me? What, 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 can you, what can you do to get me out of this? What can I see in you to get me away from my situation? The world is looking to us to take action. Man, I love the Kairos thing we're doing now. <clears throat> and it's my first time going in. And I'm so excited about it because it's action. It's doing something. And some people will come against it and say, well, they're prisoners, you know, blah, blah, blah. and you know, we need to quit. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. You need to quit thinking that way. It's an opportunity to present Jesus to the lost. Amen. That's ministry. And guess what? Some people will call that work, those five Saturdays and those six Saturdays of training and the hard training and then going in and doing this and doing all you got to do for four days. And they look at that as work. And I'm telling you now, if you have the right attitude and you understand, be willing to, to act on what God has done for you, you will realize it is not work. It's pleasure. It's ministry. It takes that attitude. You know, I wrote this in here. Ministry, uh, ministries are there, always have opportunities, and are you willing to act on it? That's the question you've got to ask yourself today. Are you willing to act on the opportunities that are given to you to work in the kingdom? The last thing I want to give you, we need to have the attitude towards God's work that Jesus had. When you think about the attitude towards the work of, uh, of his father that Jesus had, that's a tall order to hold on to. When you look at Jesus and you look at how he looked at the, the first thing that jumps off the page every time you read something about Jesus doing kingdom work and pleasing his father, the first thing that jumps off the pa- page is he was not selfish at all. Jesus was so unselfish. It wasn't about him. It wasn't about what he wanted. It wasn't about how he felt. It wasn't about what he thought. It was always Jesus looked at the uh, ministry and he looked at the work that needed to be done and he did it no matter how he felt. So we got to look at ourselves and see, am I not doing kingdom work because I want to please myself more? then I'd want to do the kingdom work. 
Am I selfish in holding on to my time and my things because I can't give that away to anybody else and, and that keeps me from doing kingdom work? You've got to look at those things. Jesus was our example and I love his attitude towards it because he said it again in John chapter 9. He said, guys, we need to work while we can because night is coming when no man can work. His attitude toward it, his attitude toward uh, God's work was so important for us to grab a hold of. There is no me first in the kingdom work. Oh, that hurts. There is no me first in the kingdom work. I, I have told some of our, in the past, now we don't have that going on now but in the past I've had some of our leaders come to me sometimes at the end of a service and I finally had to set some of them down and I had to say this to them I said this to them when I get up in the morning on Sunday morning I pray I study I do what I need to do when I come through that back door right there I have no rights I have no thoughts it's nothing about me. Doesn't matter what is going on. Doesn't matter who has a problem. Doesn't matter. It's got no, it is all about the kingdom work and putting God first. So when you walk as a leader into that back door and you're ready to do your work and you're a teacher or you're whatever you are and you come in here, you have no rights. You have no thoughts. You have no selfish attitude. It's all about getting the kingdom work done. Jesus had that attitude. Jesus said, I can go without sleep to make this happen. I can go without food to make this happen. I can go without having a bunch of friends and, and having parties and having this going on and being liked by everybody. I can go, uh, I, can, I can still do this thing. This morning as I was praying, as we get ready to close, I was praying this morning on this very thing right here. And, and, and everything that Jesus did was to please his father. If you stop and you look at his life, you stop and look at everything that he did, it was number one, because he loved us so much. But number two, it was because he wanted to please the father. It didn't matter if I don't get no sleep. It didn't matter if I didn't get to eat today. It didn't matter about my selfish needs and my selfish desires. It was all about the kingdom work. I got to get it done. Because night's coming when no man can work. And this morning as I was praying, the Lord almost audibly asked me this question. What do you think I'm going to ask you when you stand before me? What do you think I'm going to ask you when you're standing right in front of me with no excuses, no reason? You can't lie to me. You can't justify anything. You can't hide nothing. You can't, when you stand before me and the final judgment is going to be made, what do you think I'm going to ask you? And man, the Holy Spirit just really laid it on me. The thing he's going to ask me is how well and how much kingdom work did you do? He's not going to ask. He's not going to ask a question like, how well did you, did you do? How well did you like your life? Uh, did you, were you happy with the way things went in your life? Uh, are, are you happy with what's, what, what, what I did for you? And are you happy with it? He's not going to ask any of those questions, folks, because the scripture tells us he's going to look at us and he's going to say one thing. He's going to say, well done. What does that mean, Done. Work. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. Aren't you glad that God only asks a few things out of us? Some people, I'm going to say it. 
Some people have the opportunity to do one thing in a month. One thing for the church or one thing uh, for the kingdom work in a month. But yet when they stand before God, he's going to say, I gave you one, a few things. I gave you one thing and you turned it down. So I can't say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few, few things. Now I'm going to make you ruler over many. He's going to say, hey, depart from me. I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. And you may stand there and say, and I may stand there and say, if I'm not careful, we got to get in this kingdom work thing. I stand there and say, well, God, I cast out devils in your name. I did this in your name. And he says, I don't know you. There's a whole nother message in that. We can't do that right now. But what I do want you to grab and don't ever let go of this, there's an urgency to be working in the kingdom. There's an urgency more than there's ever been ever in, in, in my lifetime. I'm guaranteeing you there is, there is an urgency now to get busy in the kingdom because of the condition of our world. God is ready to save this world. And guess who he's going to do it through? You and me. You may sit back and say, wow, boy, he's really got his work cut out for him. You know what? It ain't hard work for God. God's got to figure it out. All he needs is a willing vessel. Somebody to say, you know what, God? I am terrible at this, and I don't even know. I may make this worse, and you may look at me and say, why in the world did I have you do that? But I'm going to do it anyways because it's kingdom work. I'll never forget, I, and I'm not going to use the name, and it was my own personal, was at another place building a deck, and, and, and I remember the person that lived at the house he was a young man, and he just want, he he didn't have a father, didn't raise him, and he really didn't he didn't even know how to cut his grass. And I'm out there trying to put this deck together for him by myself. I'm just I'm getting it done. He comes out, man. I really really want to work on my deck. I said, okay. I said, come on, man. I said, I I got an extra drill and got some screws, and I'll show you how we do this and everything. About five minutes into the job, I wanted to take that screw gun. Y'all just don't know. <laughs> Screws sticking up that far out, outside the deck and the top spun off of them where you can't do nothing with them. You got to get a pair of pliers, take it off. I'm trying to be gentle. I'm trying to be kind. I'm trying to do all these things. I'm trying to, the guy really, really wants to do it. He really, really wants to do this. So I felt like, man, why don't I just give him a board and have him work on a board, and I'll just finish the rest while he's working on that board. But here's my point in that. It still ended up being a good thing for him. And he and I got close to one another. And guess what? The debt got done. See, it doesn't matter if you're not as talented as the next guy or gal. It doesn't matter if you have all these skills and all these gifts. And it doesn't matter. What matters is, is where your heart is at. Lord, I want to serve you in the kingdom work. And I believe when he said to his disciples, pray for laborers. I believe we need to be doing that. We need to be praying, God, we need laborers. Lord, we need those that come along. God, I need you to use me. God, I need to show you where I can do something, where I can fit in, where I can do this or I can do that. You need to begin to go to your brothers and sisters in Christ that are doing things in the church and say, can, do you need any help? Is there something I can help you with? Now, don't be the guy with the, with the nail gun on, on the deck that I had to deal with, okay? At least be in your gift, amen? Building decks was not his gift. We found that out. 
And guess what? We find out in the ministry, people get into it and they do it and we find out that's not your gift. But it's nice and peaceful to look at them and say, but God, man, God really, really blessed you and blesses us because you gave everything you had to it. Now we're going to find out what you can do. Amen? God is calling us as a church body to a new level of fellowship. I'm telling you now, this church is going to grow. Get ready. God's already shown me it's going to grow. But also, listen to me when I tell you this, because the Holy Spirit told me to say this. But also, if you don't get in what's happening, you're going to feel left out. And then the devil's going to say, well, you don't belong here anymore. And you're going to be tricked into getting out of the thing that God is doing to where you could, if you get in it, you're going to get into the main flow. And man, God is going to do great and mighty things. It's coming. And he's calling. Man, I hear him. He's got one foot on Mount Zion, and he's calling. He's calling. We need laborers in the field. The harvest is ripe. God's ready to use you. You have a gift. You may say, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know where it's at. But you have a gift. You may say, I'm too old. <clears throat> I finally made it. I got my Medicare card in the mail. I opened it up, got it out, and I looked at Dean and I said, I'm finally old. And it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't, and I'm going to say this. It doesn't matter how feeble you are, okay? Some of us don't move like we used to move, amen? I found out I got stuff on my body I didn't know I had, amen? The older I get, I find new parts. But guess what? I still move the best I can. I focus my attitude on the kingdom work. Lord, this has got to get done. We've got to do this. The harvest is ripe. And we give everything we, we, we can. If we give everything we can, I guarantee you the walls of this place will bust out. Because God's ready to move us to a new level. Our whole retreat is going to be about fellowship. It's going to be about growing together, about becoming a family. It's, God's already got it laid out. It's already there. I can't wait because we're already close. I consider you my family. I do. Now, y'all don't invite me over enough for dinner, but that's okay. I mean, <laughs> usually family every once in a while says, come on over for dinner. You know, I'm teasing. You know I'm teasing. But when you hurt, and I mean this with all my heart, when you hurt, I cry. It hurts me. I don't want to see Brandy sick and in the hospital. That hurts me. I, I don't want to see what's been going on uh, with, with our family members and, and the heart uh, things are going through and all. I don't want to see that. I don't want that happening. That hurts me. Those that are struggling right now and going through things in their life, and whether it's financial, whatever it is, man, I feel that. And God is saying, that's what it's going to take to go to the new place he's taking us. How I many know God will not give you what he won't trust you with? Amen. Come on. He's not going to give you what he won't trust you with. And I believe he's ready to trust us with a whole lot more. I believe it with all my heart. But it takes God workers. Look at your neighbor and say, we need to be God workers. 
Amen. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes this morning. God is so good. He's so faithful. How many by the uplifted hand say, Pastor, you got me. I need to work harder in the kingdom. Amen. Come on, get them up there. Amen. Let's just all come to the altar and pray out this morning together. Church family, if you can't, if you can't come, we understand. But if you can, come on down.